Hello everyone, welcome to part two, looking at the citric acid cycle. So we're just going to start with the, our overview that we looked at in our last lecture. So again, we can have carbs, fatty acids, or amino acids become acetyl-CoA entering the citric acid cycle. And remember that we produce three NADH into one FDH. This forms ATP in the electron transfer chain, which we'll talk about next. We have two CO2s produced, and we have one GDP. So as I said, per cycle, so remember this kind of occurs per pyruvate, per pyruvate, per pyruvate. So we have one GDP, guanine triphosphate, we have three NADH, and one FADH. But again, this happens twice per glucose molecule. And again, this is all done so we can get energy. So a more detailed overview. And as we did in the last lecture, we ended at step three of the citric acid cycle. So if you want to get a, if you want a quick refresher on steps one to three, you should go check out that lecture. So remember, when we go through the cycle, it's important to follow the carbon. There are six, five, and four carbon molecules, plus two carbon acetyl groups fed into the beginning of the cycle. So we have our six carb, our two carbon acetyl group of the acetyl CoA, and our four carbon oxal acetate forming that citrate. And then again, we lose carbon here when we go to al when we go to alpha ketoglutarate, and we lose another carbon going from alpha ketoglutarate to succinate. So these are really important to remember. So the molecules with six carbons include citrate and isocitrate. The ones with five carbons are alpha ketoglutarate. Four carbons include succinate, fumarate, malate, and oxal acetate. And the two carbon molecule includes is the acetyl group on acetyl CoA. So we looked at this before, this is the fully detailed view. So this is a good one if you want to redraw it and you know it takes your time to go through. I recommend drawing this out a few times and really focusing on when these happen. And then again, we have one GDP produced and two CO2. And then here we get our FADH and our three NADH is from here and here. So now moving back into the steps. So now we have step four where we go from isocitrate to alpha ketoglutarate. So we go from we have isocitrate and we have an NAD plus, and our products are alpha ketoglutarate NADH, as well as CO two. So again, this is dehydrogenation and decarboxylation, and this is called isocitrate dehydrogenase the enzyme. And as we said many times, the enzymes get named after dehydro dehydrogenation before other types of reactions. So the oxidation of isocitrate generates NADH through the dehydrogenase enzyme. Decarboxylation of isocitrate causes the loss of CO2 and through the loss of carboxylic acid functional group. And again, biochemical process, dehydrogenation will take pre precedence. So step five. So step five, we have alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl CoA. So we need NADH, NAD, and a CoA, a coenzyme A. And again, our products are succinyl CoA, NADH, and CO2. So another NADH is being produced, and another CO2 is being removed. And remember, there's two CO2 removed in the citric acid cycle. Again, another dehydrogenase, and the enzyme name is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, as we can see here. So we have the oxidation of alpha ketoglutarate, which generates the NADH through dehyd dehydrogenase enzymes. Then we have succinyl CoA formed by the addition of a coenzyme group, coenzyme A. And we also have the decarboxylation of the five carbon alpha ketoglutarate. So we go from five carbon to four carbon. One, two, three, four. Again, this CoA doesn't count the carbons because as we talked about this is a 21 carbon but well anyways but yeah that's not including the count so then we go for step six we go succinyl coa to succinate where we use we need a gtp and an inorganic phosphate and the products include the coa so the coa is cleaved again and we produce a gtp which is guanine triphosphate this involves breaking the c bond through a lyase and as well as substrate level phosphorylation we need a lyase, 
and we have the name is succinyl coa synthetase. So again, we need that GTP and P inorganic phosphate to go in the reaction, producing our GTP, which is essentially equivalent to ATP. And then we have our coenzyme A removed from succinyl, and we form succinate. And again, it's four carbon. Although it didn't show up before, it is a reversible reaction. So the generation of GTP occurs through substrate level phosphorylation, and succinyl CoA is converted into the succinate through the release of the enzyme coenzyme A by succinyl CoA synthetase, which is our enzyme. And the cleavage of coenzyme A releases energy, which is harnessed as GTP. So as we said before, synthetase enzymes catalyze the formation of molecules, especially by using the energy derived from concurrent splitting of a pyrophosphate. So that's why we have this going on here from a triphosphate. It is named for the reverse reaction, which uses ATP in the forward direction. So energy content of GTP. So the energy content of GTP is the same as that of ATP. The two nucleotides that are the the two nucleotides are interconvertible by the nucleoside diphosphate kinase reaction. So here we can see GTP and ADP. They're kind of they are interconvertible. So again, this is through the nucleodiphosphate nucleoside diphosphate kinase. So this is step seven, we go from succinate to fumarate. So and we need a succinate and a FAD. So this is where we see our first FAD, and our product is a fumarate and FADH2. This is through dehydrogenation, and it's succinate dehydrogenase. So again, we have the oxygen, oxygenation, oxidation of succinate, which generates FADH. So why FAD? So FAD is more strongly oxidizing than NADH, NAD+. So step eight, fumarate to malate. So here we need an, uh, water. So we can see here the water entering. This is a hydration reaction and need a hydratase and the enzyme is fumarate hydratase. Or fumarase, at least in this case. That's the actual enzyme name, sorry. So another name for fumarase, as we said, is fumarase hydratase. That's our enzyme. So that's specific to this reaction. So step nine is malate to oxaloacetate. So again, we have another NAD and another NADH being produced. Another dehydrogenation reaction through the enzyme malate dehydrogenase. Again, the oxidation of malate generates another NADH. Note that this is, this is the same reaction as occurs in the malate aspartate shuttle that carries electrons into the mitochondria from NADH. And we'll get to that later. And again, the enzyme is malate dehydrogenase. So we can see our H's going into NADH. So the energy step in mal from malate to oxaloacetate. So malate to oxaloacetate has a large positive change to give standard free energy at around positive 29. This reaction occurs because oxaloacetate and acetyl-CoA form citrate, which has a large negative free energy and pulls the reaction over. So this essentially the very large negativity of this reaction aids this reaction in happening. And this is the next step from here, from oxaloacetate when, cit when acetyl-CoA comes in, forming citrate. So energy in the direction of the citrate acid cycle. The citrate acid cycle involves three strongly exergonic reactions. So the first is oxaloacetate and acetyl-CoA forming citrate. So here you see the large negative free energy. This is step one. Next is isocitrate to alpha ketoglutarate, which is negative 20, which is step four. And next, and third, we have alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl CoA, which is step five at negative 33. And remember, this step drags the other step forward. So this is one strongly endergonic reaction, which is malate to oxaloacetate, which is step nine at positive 20. The overall Gibbs standard free energy of the cycle is negative at around negative 40. The cycle operates only in one direction. So we know the cycle goes like that in the one direction, always ending in that oxaloacetate. So 
so ATP yields so far. So don't forget that one glucose molecule equals two pyruvates, which equals two acetyl-CoAs. So the te total net yield of energy so far is four high-energy phosphate molecules. Two ATPs from glycolysis. So when we go down, we have our two ATPs, and then the citric acid cycle, which occurs twice, where we get two GTP. But this energy yield is important when we get to these molecules. So we also have NADH and FADH oxidation. So two NADH, NADH or FADH in the mitochondria, depending on the shuttle used from glycolysis. And we also have six NADH, two FADH from the citric acid cycle because it occurs twice. So remember, it's times two. And two NADH from acetyl-CoA formation. And again, these will be all used in the electron transfer chain to produce ATP. So summary of the reaction types. So there's four reactions, four oxidation reactions, but also pyruvate dehydrogenase reaction, but not technically a citric acid cycle. Again, these oxidation reactions are to form electron carriers. So again, we have isocitrate alpha ketoglutarate, alpha ketoglutarate, the succinyl CoA. So these are getting our NADHs and our one FADH. So that's what these reactions are doing. We have succinate fumarate and the malathoxastate. These all involve dehydrogenase enzymes. So we have one substrate level phosphorylation where we go from succinyl CoA to succinate, where we produce that GTP, not ATP. Remember, these are interconvertible. We have D two decarboxylation reactions. So remember, we release two CO2s, are removed and essentially excreted as waste product. And this occurs in isocitrate to alpha ketoglutarate and alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl CoA. And note that these reactions include both oxidation and decarboxylation. So, as we mentioned, these reactions occur while NADH is being produced, but they're named after the oxidation, if you remember. So, again, what if, what if pruvate was carboxylated instead? So, as we can see here, pruvate can be carboxylated through pruvate carboxylase. This, in this mechanism, it becomes oxalacetate first. So the carboxylation introduces a carboxylic acid functional group into a molecule and can be done by adding CO2 or H3, HC3O, HCO3, which is bicarbonate. We're actually adding a CO2 into this reaction. We can see those CO2s and forming oxalacetate, which can then can go into this. So summary of the citric acid cycle is a cycle of nine steps starting at acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate. Remember, follow the carbon transfer from six, five to four. And remember, this is four carbon, and this is six, uh, this is two carbon, sorry. And that gets our first six carbon molecule as citrate. So there's oxidation, decarboxylation, hydration, substrate level phosphorylation reactions that all occur. The yield of the citric acid cycle is one GTP, three NADH, one FADH for one pruvate. So technically this whole thing would be times two. So again, that's so for one glucose molecule it'd be two GTP, six NADH, and two FADH too. And again, these will all go into the ETC, which is next, as electron carriers, and then form ATP. And that will be our next lectures. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll see you in the next one on Electro Transport Chain. See you next time.